Eh, you know what? In 1959, August, the 21st day, that was one day before my fourth birthday. Anyway, the USA, they wanted to give me one gift, and they call it a gift of statehood. But years later, I figured out what that gift was all about. Since then, I tried to return it over and over. But all I got was a gift back in the mail with return to sender written all over it. Well, this year, August 21st, 2016, we return to the scene of the crime to personally return it. The normal rule. And this is what it looks when like. When a treaty has been violated so grievously as the United States government did by waging illegal warfare against the kingdom of Hawaii is what is called restitution. You must restore the situation to what it was before the violation. And in the case of the Kingdom of Hawaii, as I explain in greater detail in my book, the United States government has the obligation to restore the Kingdom of Hawaii and evacuate Hawaii, leave Hawaii, lock, stock, and barrel. Yeah. <laughs> and allow the Kanakamala to exercise the right of self-determination. Restore the kingdom of Hawaii. Terminate this bogus fake state uh, of Hawaii. Yeah. And move on toward international recognition yes. and membership in the United Nations organization. And I believe that uh, returning land to Hawaiian is, um, how can I say? Let us know if we can, Japanese can support anything. Aloha. Hmm. Thank you. Now, you might say, oh, Professor Boyle, isn't that a pipe dream? Not at all. In 1987, I appeared at the United Nations as a guest of the Palestinians to talk about their future. And there, at that time, I said, the time has now come for you Palestinians to unilaterally create your own state and then move for international recognition and membership in the United Nations organization. And that's exactly what they did. On November 15, 1988, they adopted their Declaration of Independence. And today, the state of Palestine has de jure diplomatic recognition from 136 states in the world and observer state status at the United Nations organization in 1992. That took 25 years of hard work and organization, but they did it. And living under a most brutal colonial genocidal military occupation where today Palestinians are being shot dead like dogs in the street and yet they still resist. You, Kanaka Mali, can and must do the same thing because the only protection the modern world has developed from genocide and extermination and assimilation and elimination is an independent state of your own 
restoring that kingdom of Hawaii. Uh, my dad was born in uh, Santa Monica, California, and he's of uh, Hawaiian descent. Um, uh, his family uh, left in the Lure Line in 1934. Uh, they, back then, they were hula. They specialized in hula. They did uh, the Queen's Dance for the Queen. Uh, recently, you know, started coming back to Hawaii. I lived here full time six years ago and uh, truly blessed. Starting to still learn about who and what I am, but uh, uh, my family come from the Ka'u Pico Ohana from Mililii and Big Island, and uh, we're very proud of Hawaiians. Here's one brother you gotta listen to. His name is Kauku Ohi Wahilani. But I can sing, you know. I wanna ask you, what do you think about that song, Hawaii 78? What would the king and queen think about Hawaii now? if they could come back and see him. So, I'm gonna ask him, and this is what he said. Watch, check him out. In your own words, and your own ideas, what does that song mean to you, and what are you trying to say uh, to the people? Song of Life 70, that, that, that touches, that one touched my full life from when it first came out, and, and to my understanding, when it first came out, it was banned, it was banned by all the radio stations, only KCCN. 1420 was the only one that went that went, was that went put Hawaii 78 on the radio. Yeah. But just the words of Hawaii 78 and how would they feel, you know, about the modern city life. And if you just imagine our if they came back and saw the traffic lights and railroad tracks, you know, just the progress of the heaven of the colonization and occupation of our country, of our Haina. That song is one of the most patriotic songs, patriotic songs, you know, I can do as a kana. How do you Mula. think they would feel if they did come back? What do you Kau think maha. they would feel? Kaumaha. Kaumaha Nui. But they're for progress. I would say they're for progress, I, I, but I think overall, you know, and especially finding out when, you know, coming into, coming into the palace and you know, the palace is a non-profit now, you know, where the state should be, I believe the state should be taking care of this, not non-profit for a palace. Because we don't only, remember Lahui, we don't, we don't only recognize non-European, first non-European kingdom recognized on the globe, on the planet, was the Hawaiian kingdom. Yes. I guess some of the heaven would be where they place some of this new technology. I, in land. Well, thank you for yes, you know, talking about new technology as a Kia'i from Mount Awa Kia, you know, the, the TMT, you know, that that is a technology. And that's that's that technology out of curiosity, that's what they said, the astronomers. You know, so we're gonna desecrate we're gonna desecrate one of our, our pico in our kubulipo, one of our most sacred Bahipana for curiosity and using the world as a crutch, you might say. Okay, so there you go. I go around there, I'll give back my gift. And you know what I find out? After all those years I had the gift, I found out no more statehood. That was a lie. That was all fake. So, I guess you can say, I never had a gift. Those buggers gave me something that was nothing. But anyway, what I do know is that I have the Hawaiian Kingdom. We still the Hawaiian Kingdom. All we gotta do is go get them. But anyway, I talk to you guys later. That was good stuff today, but ah, stay tuned. I tell you guys some more stuff later. Hope you enjoy. Aloha.